Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, uh, continuing our focus on the Nigeria Economic Summit, where we're focusing on transforming education through partnerships for global competitiveness. But yes, you had some of those who spoke there. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Obi Ezekwesile, who is a former Minister of Education, to uh, perhaps shed a lot more light on what you already heard us speak there in that report. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, Chamberlain. Well, now you say we have to play catch up. And, you know, many years ago, some people will never think that we'll be here talking about playing catch up because you started the program at the time, which if we had picked up on that, who knows where it would have been today. But that part where the public and the private sector has to work together. Tell us a little more about it. How will it work? Um, I, I, I think that it is clear that education um, has to be the business of everybody. Um, and um, I did say yesterday that education is not a business. Uh, the reason that I said that is that education is an investment. Um, an investment is different from looking at a business. Um, you know, because when you look at a business, oftentimes what people are looking out for is the bottom line, which is, you know, catch out on profit. But with education, there are multiple levels of a return that come from educating one individual in a population. And, and so when you talk about the public-private uh, uh, sector partnership and the society at large partnering with government uh, to make education accessible and relevant uh, in any society, you essentially say that it's the, the responsibility of everyone. But as I did say yesterday, the government has the ultimate leadership as far as moving a country forward uh, uh, through education is concerned. You know, we've always talked about that uh, leadership as well as will, which was the first at the presidential plenary uh, when we yeah. started this uh, particular uh, summit. Uh, the thing is, uh, do you, being someone who's been in government, you know, we must really ask that question. Mm -hmm. You know, now the will is something, well, not tangible. So we don't even know when we get to see that will. How do we uh, what do we look out for for us to say, aha, there goes the wheel of the government? I think it is demonstrated in, first, the willingness of government to accept that there is a crisis in, in, in education. Um, when, when I, I was posted to the Ministry of Education, um, I, I remember that the first set of uh, reaction was, oh, Madam Due Process is going to get us more money for education. And I said, hold it. This is not about money. We need to understand what the issues are, how problematic are the conditions of this sector. So we had to dig deep so that evidence would tell us exactly what was going wrong. And there are many indicators that you can use in knowing the state of any sector. So we used those indicators, did the diagnostics, and boy, the situation was bad. So our program was called Crisis. And then, you know, we owned the state of affairs. You could see what I showed you yesterday yeah. in my presentation. I mean, scoring everything the way we scored it on F. This was a government that had been there for like six years before I was sent to education. But things were bad. And we needed to own that things were bad. So that's one. Once you see that ownership of a problem by government. That's a demonstration of will. The second thing that you then see is a concerted effort at understanding the problem, meaning that the government will demonstrate that it wants every voice that can say something about what aspect of the problem you know, can be solved. That's a demonstration of will. If a third demonstration of will is that the government would assemble the best expertise around solving the problem. There's absolutely no problem that cannot be solved. Suleiman, no problem. I haven't seen a problem that mankind cannot solve because God has given us the faculty to solve the problems here on earth. You know, so assemble the people who can best address the problems that you have. That's a demonstration of will. Um, then the willingness of government to actually get beyond its own boundaries. When I was in education, I knew that there was no way government could solve this problem. So our partnership was 
knew it. I mean, like, when you can, today in Nigeria, I, I mean, like, I, I, I go around and people say to me, I was in your stakeholders meeting on this aspect of education. I was in your stakeholders meeting on that aspect of education. Because there were multiple levels. It had to be comprehensive because education is a system. And a system is not something where you just simply say, I think that's the problem. And then you start coaching on it. Otherwise, it becomes like, you know, the agbada of the man who he flings off and then he tries to fold it up. And then the other one goes off. You don't want that. So you've got to treat it as a system and be comprehensive in approach. Because we have serious structural issues in the dysfunctionality in education. You know, there are those who say um, the situation when you were there is different from the situation now. So why are you taking us back to looking at what you did in your time? Why can't we look at something else to take it forward? Oh, I actually tried a lot to sort of um, get a sense of what, what, has, what, you know, what, what indicators can I focus on that show a movement, a trend toward um, out of crisis. And, you know, I just couldn't find much. I really couldn't, you know, because I'm, I'm somebody, I'm moved not by sentiments, I'm moved by policy evidence. I'm, I'm very empirical. I, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me who is doing anything. What matters to me is what's the evidence showing, you know, so take this, the matter of um, children out of school. <laughs> what's the evidence? The evidence is that we increased to a nation that contributes 30 to 40 percent of children out of school with just a population of 170 million people. That's not a good place to be. That's evidence. Mm -hmm. A second evidence is, at the time that I was minister, I called attention to the fact that our academic achievements were, were terrible. And so it was clear that our investment in education was not producing commensurate results or, or outcomes. Mm -hmm. And what, what was the indicator for that? The indicator for that was that we did a trend analysis of performance in the West Africa certificate. That's the WASC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did that. And we found that over a period of 10 years, we basically <laughs> dived into the deep because we were now an average of 34% were passing their WASC with five credits, including English and mathematics. That was alarming to me. I said, 34%? That meant that for every set of students we presented for WASC, that we were going to get 66% failure. Great. Because, I mean, if you, you don't have credit in English and mathematics, even if you say, I have five credits, but I didn't pass English and mathematics, who's going to think you passed secondary school? You know? So I looked at that, and I was alarmed. So I said, this is the key indicator that will show the trend out of this morass that we found ourselves in. And we, we started focusing on the many issues in education, like teachers, you know, the quality of the teachers, if that's a major, major issue. That's a factor. 60% of your learning outcomes would depend on the quality of your teachers. You know, you know? Uh, sorry to call you there. You know, we've really not looked at that before now until recently. And even one of the speakers uh, emphasized the importance of uh, uh, the teachers having right. uh, good qualified uh, professionals uh, yes. as teachers. So uh, what kind of addition can we put in that regard to make us uh, have uh, some of the best? I, I, I'll come to that, but you know, just to close out on, on what he said, because it's important. You know, it, unfortunately, in our society, in our democracy, and that's what I see, our democracy uh, is, is endangered and can be imperiled by this absolute lack of tolerance of, of views that sort of say, hey, can we look at things the way that we should look at them? Everything is personalized and it is politicized. For goodness sake, we're not in a good place with education. We were not in a good place when I was there for less than one year. And I was passionate about the issues that I met there. And we had a menu of 
proposals of what needed to be done for the different elements in education. When you would reflect back to seven years after, and you see things like the indicator I'm talking about, 34% at my time, I started talking about it and doing something about it. I come back seven years after, it's declined even further. 2013 result showed that it was only about 24% that had five credits, including in English and mathematics. Do you need any more indicator to tell me why we should talk about the things that were truncated and completely neglected? We shouldn't do policies on the basis of personality. The vulnerable and the poor in the society cannot afford elite quarrels. They don't need it. What do they need that for? doesn't serve them. 